Hi, my name is Chris Jernigan. I'm a postdoc in my Chien's lab at Cornell University. I'm broadly interested in sensory systems and their interplay with experience and perception. I'm going to be telling you about some of the work that I've been doing over the last year in the northern paper wasp, Polistes fiscatus. Many of you are probably familiar with this system. Uh, female Polistes fiscatus have highly diverse color patterns on their faces, which they can use to discriminate among each other on the nest. Um, there are a couple of uh, really big open questions in this system, uh, which some of the data in this presentation will hopefully begin to start addressing. Um, the first of which is, where is identity or face information possibly coded in the nervous system? And the second of which is, what is a face to a wasp? We really have very little idea about what components of these images these wasps are using to make these discriminations. Um, however, there are a number of studies that give us some hints. One of the most important of which was a study from Sheehan and Tibbetts in 2011 in which they asked if animals could discriminate among a pair of images. Images uh, were placed in an arena similar to what is shown on screen. Um, one set of images was placed on the left and another set placed on the right. One of these images was paired with electrical shock and the other one was paired with safety. The images side was switched pseudorandomly across trials and animals were assessed on their performance uh, over time. Now, Polistes fiscatus does this quite well with um, face images, as you can see here on the left. Um, they, they do significantly better than chance, which is indicated by the dashed line. Somewhat less well with geometric patterns, as you see here. They do even worse with images of prey items, such as caterpillars. Most critically, when they digitally alter uh, some of these images, in this case, uh, removing the antenna of these images, these animals are no longer able to make the same level of discrimination, which they did with the unaltered images. When they rearrange the internal features of these faces, again, these animals were uh, significantly less able to make the discrimination between these uh, different images, uh, suggesting that both the uh, relative position of the internal parts of the face as well as the antenna are kind of critical for uh, wasps for identifying these as facial stimuli. Another critical experiment in this system was done by Tibbetts and colleagues in 2019, in which they uh, showed that social experience is necessary for the development of this discrimination ability in Polistes fuscatus. They tested individuals that had been isolated uh, immediately post-adult occlusion and reared in isolation for six days versus uh, socially reared individuals for that same amount of time. They found that individuals that had been socially isolated were no longer able to make uh, discrimination among facial images uh, above chance, unlike their social uh, conspecifics. We decided to ask how social experience impacts development of the brain in this system. We had three treatment groups uh, newly emerge, which were individuals that um, were sacrificed uh, less than 24 hours post-adult occlusion. Um, we then had two mature treatment groups, which were aged between 58 and 71 days, uh, those that were housed socially, um, and those that were isolated for their entire adult lives. Um, we dissected the brains of these three treatment groups, uh, stained for a synaptic marker, and then reconstructed various sensory and sensory integration centers in the brain. Um, looking specifically at the medulla and the lobula, which are visual input centers, uh, the antennal lobe, uh, which is an olfactory input center, the anterior optic tubercle, um, which is a visual glomerulus in the central, central brain, which integrates a number of visual features, um, as well as the mushroom body calyces, um, which integrate a number of different sensory modalities, as well as are thought to be involved in learning and memory across insects. So what did we find? Uh, we found somewhat unsurprisingly that brain volume is significantly impacted by age in the species, uh, with newly emerged adults having significantly smaller total measured brain volumes than either of the mature treatment groups, isolated and social. This difference in brain volume is driven primarily by the mushroom body calyces. 
And most critically, we found that there is a difference in the relative investment of two of the central brain regions, the AOT or anterior optic tubercle and the mushroom body calyces, with isolated individuals have, having significantly less investment in AOT relative to the mushroom body calyces than their social counterparts. This was really cool because the AOT or the anterior optic tubercle is known to be a chromatic processing center in the insect brain. Um, which led us to ask, is color required for behavioral face discrimination in Palucius fuscatus? Now, these patterns, as you can see, are made of both chromatic and achromatic spatial information, um, which animals could be using to discriminate among these images. Um, we created a novel set of six images, which you can see here. Uh, in which the antennal position, mandible position, eyes, and body background are identical across the images. And the only thing that varies is the internal patterning between the eyes among these different faces. We then created uh, grayscale versions of these same images and asked whether animals um, tested either on the color set or the grayscale set were able to make this discrimination. Now, what did we find? Individuals trained using color stimuli, like in previous studies, um, were readily able to discriminate among facial images. However, individuals trained on grayscale um, were no longer able to make this discrimination above chance. You could see in the previous video, we also tracked animals during trials. Uh, individuals trained using color stimuli had a significantly lower latency to enter the correct zone, and they also moved with a significantly faster velocity. However, this alone is unable to explain the first choice decisions uh, that these anim animals made. And this also suggests that those trained using grayscale images uh, somehow had more difficulty understanding the assay. In conclusion, we find that color appears to be intimately tied to facial discrimination in Polistes fuscatus and propose a novel brain region, um, which is also known to process chromatic information as a potential center for face processing in this species. I'd like to thank you for your attention during this presentation. I'd also like to thank some of the symposium organizers for giving me the opportunity to present this work. I'd also like to highlight some of the co-authors on this project. Dr. Jay Staffstrom uh, helped lead a lot of behavioral components of this project, and an amazing undergraduate, Natalie Zaba, was critical um, for the collection of both the morphological and behavioral data in this work. And if you'd like to hear more about some of the upcoming projects, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, and thank you again.